I know recently I said I would not talk about Sony very often on this channel because, again, I do not like fueling fan wars and fan debates and console stuff and fanboyism, but I can't help but respond to even more things that Sony has to say about Nintendo in this case, actually in regards to the Nintendo Switch. Now, Sony's Jim Ryan, which if you don't know him, he is the one who also made the official statements for why Sony is not supporting crossplay, specifically about protecting children and stuff. I did a whole video on that. You can check that above. What happened here now is that GameIndustry.biz interviewed him, and most of the interview deals with Sony and their games and their platform and, you know, a little bit of the competition between, you know, Microsoft and Sony in terms of, like, the Xbox One X, the PlayStation 4 Pro, blah, 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 blah. Some interesting stuff, but nothing that really pertains to us Nintendo fans until Game Industry Biz talks about this. They ask him this question. Now, as you look to target this broader market, doesn't the timing of Nintendo Switch pose a potential challenge. After all, mass market appeal is Nintendo's forte. Jim Ryan goes on to respond. It's a very interesting question. To the extent that they come in and the word steal is a bit crude, but they take a more casual oriented consumer who might otherwise have been a target for PlayStation 4. Obviously, viewed narrowly, that is not to our benefit. But when you look at the whole of the industry ecosystem, having a resurgent Nintendo back and playing in a meaningful matter, I hear a lot of what they showed at E3 was really good, can only be to the benefit to the industry. And to pretty much everyone in the industry. So we will see. If it means that some of those people, the many millions of people, who got into the Wii start to come back, in many cases, they have been absent for a few years. If they come back and they go into a store looking for a Switch, I'll have a crack at selling them a PS4. So on the surface, he's saying that a resurgent Nintendo is ultimately good for Sony because it brings more consumers into the video game space, which in turn gives Sony an opportunity to sell more PlayStation 4s. And I don't have a problem with that general viewpoint. Obviously, they're viewing Nintendo as healthy competition in the sense where Nintendo's bringing more consumers to the market that might not be there, and that gives PlayStation a unique opportunity to be like, hey, instead of a Switch, why, not, why don't you grab this PlayStation 4? Here, here's why you should buy a PlayStation 4 and not a Switch. And that's great. That's fine. That To me, that's what healthy competition's all about, having options in the marketplace and trying to sell consumers that your product is better than another product for their personal needs. Now, obviously, you know, there's the whole thing thing about the Wii audience and I want to address this not because I think if Nintendo was targeting the Wii audience that that's a bad thing Nintendo is obviously a master of mass market appeal right that they don't just target you know hardcore gamers they don't just target kids they don't just target you know teenagers it's all about the appeal factor to a as wide an audience as they can. Nintendo's always been this way. I know some people think that hasn't been the case, but the NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, GameCube, it had the same philosophy as the Wii, just a different type of execution. You know, they went for mass market appeal through appealing to people's senses of controls and through people's senses of power and graphic fidelity. Like, oh, casual people who like playing Madden are going to want to play a Madden that looks more realistic. Whereas with Wii, they kind of shift and said, look, maybe power isn't the only way to innovate and the only way to bring people in. Maybe we got to simplify the controls because it's getting too complex for children or for you know older people, older adults that think video games are bad because they can't get their hands around the 17,000 buttons on the controller, which is understandable. If you think about it, if you've never played a game on a controller before, especially in today's age when everything is touch, right? It's all tap, tap, tap and swipe. You go from that simplistic control scheme to something with a whole bunch of buttons and twin sticks, it can be very off-putting. Now, why I'm talking about this is because I don't agree with Sony's assessment of what the Wii and the Switch have in common. Basically, he's saying that Nintendo is bringing in audience from the Wii, or might be bringing back some of that Wii audience. And... I don't think Sony's taking Nintendo seriously as anything more than a casual-oriented consumer-driven platform. Uh, 
like uh, he says, you know, Nintendo's not stealing any audience. They're, they're, they're only, you know, going after this casual audience of consumer that we also are going after, but they're doing it in a different way, and we have a, a sales opportunity here. I think they missed the ball. The Nintendo Switch's current audience, I wouldn't say is very casual oriented at all. In fact, I would argue that Nintendo Switch's audience, at least right now, and probably for the foreseeable future, are passionate gamers that just are either already Nintendo fans, there's obviously the Nintendo audience, or they are just lapsed gamers that don't have the time to sit in front of their TV all of the time to play. And that's not to say you, those of you out there, like maybe you have hours upon hours and you play the Switch docked all the time, and that's great. That, that, that's what's nice about the Switch is it gives you the option. But the point is, is that Nintendo's appeal of the Switch so far hasn't been a casual focus. It hasn't been broadening the focus of gaming. It's been more focused, I think, than Nintendo's ever been in terms of the audience they want. And the audience the Switch is going after is adults. But let's just be serious here. We're not talking soccer moms. We're not talking my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, or my four-year-old son. We're talking about adults that have experienced gaming but maybe don't have the time to do it as much anymore and the switch helps them find the time to do it that is the switch's audience let's think about the the major games that are pushing sales for the switch there's not a wii sports out there right there's you know yeah there is a just dance but the sales numbers of that are just okay not great look at the things that are pushing it look at breath of the wild breath of the wild is as hardcore of a serious gamer game you could have Yes, Mario Kart 8 has a broader appeal, but let's be honest. Mario Kart 8 is generally considered a pretty core gaming experience. ARMS just came out. ARMS is not going to have heavy appeal to children. It's not going to have heavy appeal to my mother. It's going to have appeal to people who care about fighting games and care about innovation in the fighting game sphere. They just did an esports tournament for it at E3. Like, that's hardcore gaming focused. Like, that's, that's right there in the heart of video games. And Splatoon 2, again, being advertised from the get-go for esports and for its seriousness and its competitiveness, in addition to all of its wonky things it does in single player, and the fact that you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid. Like, that is extremely focused on a more core audience. Look at their other key games this year. Super Mario Odyssey, definitely aimed at core gamers. Look at Skyrim. How is that not aimed at core gamers? Like, I know Skyrim's everywhere now, going to virtual reality and everything, but still, Skyrim is a pretty serious game that you're not going to get casuals really into. Nintendo's focus with the Switch through this first year, at least, and if not into the future, I mean, look at other announcements they have. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, that's a pretty serious game, and that's hitting this year. Metroid Prime 4, that's not a casually appearing, appealing game. You know, you could argue that their Yoshi game and the Kirby game are a bit more broader. But they're broader in the sense that they still have that appeal to a core gamer, right? Like, if you like 2D side-scrolling platformers, those games are going to have some appeal to you. Even if they also have some appeal to my children. Like, Nintendo just makes those kind of games where they're kind of for everyone. But if you just look at the general aim, all of the commercials for the Switch are young adults who are, have busy lives, they have college, they have girlfriends, they have parties to go to, they have work to go to, they're working 17 jobs, maybe they have kids to raise, but the kids aren't the ones playing it, it's all the adults, it's all focused on adults and rooftop parties and garage parties, backyard parties, you know, on the bus, on the train, you know, while you're sitting next to someone in a car or meeting up, you know, in a classroom and getting a quick game in before class, like, everything about the Switch has been focused on the non-casual audience. That's where I think Sony and even Game Industry Biz here is framing the Switch in the wrong way. The Switch is a massive success right now. There's no doubt about it. It's going to have huge year one sales. Whether or not those sales continue is going to be largely contingent on Nintendo continuing the game momentum and hopefully getting some third parties on board to help with the in-between process. You know, Skyrim is great. Rocket League is amazing. But, you know, how many more of those games do they have coming past year one? We have no idea. I'm actually the third party game I'm most excited for is NBA 2K because apparently that's going to be a full version. Um, unlike FIFA, although I, I know FIFA doesn't look half bad on Switch, I, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. It doesn't look half bad. It's not the console version, it's not the full version. I was 100% correct. We are getting an inferior version, but I mean, you know, 
it, it looks good. It looks better than I expected. Reality is that the Nintendo Switch is more core focused to gamers and adults than I think Nintendo has probably been since the N64 days, maybe even going back to the Super Nintendo days. To me, the clear-cut audience for the Switch is not the same as the Wii. So, like, for Sony, they'd be like, oh, look, you know, when they start bringing some of the Wii audience back, we see there's an opportunity to sell a PS4. Like, the PS4, on the surface, will never have the appeal factor of the Switch because it can't do what the Switch does. The PlayStation 4 is going to appeal to people who want that box underneath their TV. They don't care about taking it on the go. They're just going to be those people who sit down and do long gaming sessions and play, you know, some of the best-looking games out there. Same with the Xbox One X. Switch is about being convenient for people who are busy, which, in general, is most adults. The Switch is a very adult-oriented product. This is why they're continuing to still sell the 3DS, by the way. For anyone out there that's like, oh, why does Nintendo continue to support a 3DS? Why are they releasing a 2DS XL? Blah, blah, blah. Why are they doing all this stuff? Well, it's pretty simple. Because that's their kid product. I mean, seriously, that's the product they're going to be selling to kids. It's cheaper. You're not buying a kid a $300 premium product that can be easily broken because it's a you know a, kind of a high-end tablet. We're talking about, yes, I know, the, the Nintendo Switch actually survived a 1,000-foot fall. That's crazy. But you're kind of, we're kind of getting off topic here. The 3DS is for kids. That's why Nintendo's going to keep it going. They're going to keep supporting it beyond 2018, they claim. And I get it, because that's their kid product. But and it, it, I'm not trying to say you're a kid if you play 3DS games. So that's, come on now. But the Switch is clearly aimed at a specific target audience that Sony, Game Industry Biz, and maybe even some other companies out there are completely misrepresenting. And this is partially why I'm a little upset that at least this year we're not getting heavy third-party support, because Switch feels like the perfect opportunity for third parties to get on board and get those hardcore games out to an audience that actually would play them. They just want to play them on the go. How awesome would Assassin's Creed Origins be if you could take it with you? I mean, that sounds amazing. And, and I know there's power issues and it's not a 4K and it doesn't do true 4K. The Xbox One X doesn't even do true 4K, but whatever. It, it, it's not as powerful as the other boxes out there, but... There's enough consumers that seem to be willing to sacrifice that power to bring their favorite games with them on the go that are console level quality. They don't feel like they're losing a whole lot with the Switch in compared to like a 3DS, you know? You, you take, uh, say, I don't know, Ocarina of Time 3D on the 3DS out, that feels like a lesser experience than just, say, taking Breath of the Wild with you on the go. It's the same experience you get in your TV on the go. So, at the end of the day, I, I just, I know I say that a lot at the end of the day. I really apologize. I, I just, I feel like the conversation around the Switch from outsiders that aren't in with the community of Switch should start to shift a little bit. I, I think we need to start recognizing that the Switch isn't this side dish casual machine. It is almost as core or hardcore of a system as there can be, and it recognized that there was a giant hole in the industry that tethered console gaming to a TV, and the Vita didn't serve it well enough, and now Nintendo came in and said, look, we got something even better, and we have the games to back it up, and right now they do, and hopefully third parties realize it, because I think there's a huge audience for a lot of these third-party games in portable fashion or on TV, where people can get the same experience either way. I feel like there is a missed opportunity for some third parties out there that hopefully they realize in year two. And even if we don't get Call, Call of Duty World War II as an example, we get the next Call of Duty game or the next Assassin's Creed game. Hopefully things like Mario and Rabbids, you know, that is very core oriented in terms of its gameplay style, you know, resonates and sells well. And, and Breath of the Wilds and the Skyrims, all these games continue to sell really well because I think that's going to further prove the kind of audience that's here. There's a lot of adults that want those games that don't have the time to sit in front of their TV all the time to do it. But if you give them the Switch and say, look, you could take it with you places. You could take it on the plane. You could take it to your hotel room very easily. It's not going to take up a lot of room in your bag. That's appealing. And Nintendo Switch has really hit a market here that I don't think Sony 
game industry biz, and many others understand. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike it, well, you know, hit that dislike button. Subscribe, comment below for more content like this. And, hey, I, I don't bring this up enough, but we do have a Patreon. So if you'd like to support our endeavors here at Nintendo Prime, you can go to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. If you donate, uh, I believe, the $5 tier, you get early access to our podcast every single week. Every week that we release it, I know it's been a couple weeks because of E3 and, and a bunch of shenanigans. But what can ensure that there isn't missed weeks in the podcast is obviously if we hit our first goal, which is a $100 tier, which will ensure we have a podcast every single week. No matter what, no matter how sick I get, there will be a podcast every week if we hit that goal. For $1 or more, you know, if you just, if you just have a dollar to give, that allows you to get Patreon exclusive stuff. Like I'm thinking about releasing my full story on what happened with Zelda Informer. Uh, but I don't really want to make like a big public hubbub about it. But for people who want to support and pay to see it, like that's great. I might put that exclusively on Patreon. Just as an example, and other Patreon exclusive polls. And obviously we have other donation tiers that let you control some of the content we do. Name some of the content. Get like your name mentioned at the end of the podcast. Yada, 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 yada. We have a lot of great stuff going on on our Patreon. So if you would like to support us, go right ahead. If not, it's okay. Like, I'm trying to make a career out of this. If I can't, if it just ends up being a side dish in my life, so be it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.